again on the theme of films helping people now we come on to Romans 12 20 yeah. which was another really powerful story yeah um, which another one I didn't want to do yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one that we did together we did together yeah, yeah. I remember coming to London because I'd been working with you you'd done that documentary about me and then uh, came to London to watch you did a film called The, the Carriage Way yeah, the carriage and way. I sat with Sharon we watched it and I said god this is beautiful I said could you imagine what they would do with one of my scripts I said, this is so well, well done. It's so uh, classy. And I never thought no more of it. And then afterwards, you and Ludwig come up to me and said, um, would you do a script for us? And I said, which one? And you said, the handshake film. I said, what, what's the handshake film? You said, the part in Watch My Back, when you meet the paedophile that assaulted you and you forgave him and shook his hand. And I remember my heart sinking. And I remember saying to you, oh, well, you know, if you, if you can get some money, if you can get some funds and, you know, I, I can't sit and write it and, you know, you'd need to pay. And, and I knew I was just trying to avoid doing it. And I went back to Sharon and I said, oh, they want me to write about the handshake thing. And she said, what handshake thing? I said, you know, the forgiveness thing. And she said, well, haven't you been there enough? I said, no, no. I said, I'm frightened to go there. That's why I know I need to do it. And she said, then you need to do it. So I'll come back to you and Ludwig and said, I'll write that script. Yes, you don't yeah. need to find any money. I'll just write it because I need to write it. And uh, of course, so much came out from that. And I wrote when I wrote the first draft. It's a weird thing. I'll tell you this story. I think I, I may have told you this, but um, when when I started to write the film, Sharon called me from the front room. She said, "Have you seen this in the paper?" I said, no, what's that? She said, the guy that sexually abused you when you was a kid, he's just been finally caught. He's up, yes, he's yeah, up, yeah. In, he's up in court. You're telling, you're telling us this. I remember saying, well, that's a strange thing. That's strange. I'm writing about it. Mm. And now he's up in court. He's, you know, up for a, 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 a bevy of historical offences. And I never thought no more of it. And then when I finished the film, um, first of all, I thought it was too simple. I thought this is too simple. Paul and Ludwig aren't going to like this. I didn't want to send it to you. Then I thought, well, it's all I've got. And obviously we knocked it back and forth. You helped me a lot. But I remember ringing up a friend of mine and we were thinking about using his son in the film. His son was an actor. And I spoke, and as I was talking to him, he was a commentary guy. He said, oh, did you hear about so-and-so? And I said, no. And then he said, the guy that abused, no, he didn't know this guy had abused me. He said, this guy from, this guy that used to work at the boys club has just committed suicide. He killed himself. So the guy yeah. that abused me with, within the two weeks I was writing the film, I'd been arrested and then killed himself uh, in London. Yes, I remember where we were when you phoned us. Yeah. I think, yeah, we had just... Um, because just to go back, when you first sent us the script, it's... Sorry for the swearing, it scared the shit out of us. <laughs> it really did. It was the most... It was, a, it was... It scared us so much, but that's why we thought, well, we have to do this. <laughs> yeah, it was so far beyond what we thought yeah it was going to be what, what scared you about it just just the rawness the dialogue the you know it was just an it, it was it was so it didn't didn't leave it, the didn't leave the burn did it no it didn't it didn't pull any punches it was like oh man i could you know this is intense yeah and then i kind of came back and uh, um you know ludwig and i both said you know this is why we have to do this we we like films that are really powerful and challenging and that's why we, we got into filmmaking yeah and then, you know, we asked you to write this film and we thought, I, I, I don't know, I thought it was going to be a bit more in our comfort zone. Yeah, And yeah. then when you sent it to us, we thought, okay, if, you know, the films that I'm watching, they're quite extreme. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity for us to step up and, yeah. and, and tackle something that's this serious. We sent it to a lot of people and they all said no. No. Yeah. They said, I, I can't do this. I, you know, I've got children, I've got this or I can't, yeah. you know, this is, this is a... Uh, I can't even look at it. I'm, I'm on page five and I've put it down. Yeah. And uh, every time that was coming back to us, we were getting more excited. Weirdly. Yeah, I remember like, how, much you used to, um, how much you used to love it when people say, I don't get it. And you go, yeah, but you don't see what we see. They used to say that we just can't do it. This is too much. Yeah. It's too hard. It's interesting as well, because I thought the film, the script was too simple. And I thought, you, you, won't, you, won't, you won't think it's good enough. And you would thought the other thing, either way. Um, and that was the same. The money came really yes. quickly. Um, and it was... Oh, it's a fantastic shoot but yes. again there was the scene it, the film was about rev revealing again it was about it was about bringing shadows up and about uh, individuating them about processing them so i'm talking to the we're, we're getting ready for the film and i'm talking to the makeup girl 
And uh, I said, look, it's really important because we were talking about her doing the tattoos for the character. And I said, it's really important. Look, I said, look, I said, I said, and I, this is the first time I understood this. I didn't know. I said, this is his, this is his war paint. I said, look, look at the back here. I said, this is his armory. This is the armory, all this here. This is all protection. I said, this is war paint. I said, and these are all weapons. And I, I remember you were there because I yes. lost it. And I just started sobbing and everyone was going... Everyone's Everyone's going, we were all there. Yeah. <laughs> <Making tea>. someone, <laughs> someone said, yeah, let's get some yeah, tea. Yeah. But it was just, it was the first time I understood that I'd spent my whole life building my body into an armoured tank so that I couldn't be abused again. And I'd covered myself in war paint. These are all samurais on my body. My legs are covered in tattoos of samurais. My back mm. at the time was massive. I had this massive back because um, when I was abused the guy came I was sleeping in this makeshift tent and he crept over my back and I just felt I needed this I didn't know any of this until until we made the film and what, the moment I was able to see it I was able to process it and each time I was able to process it I was able to go to another level so it was like a pin in a crab shell going deeper and deeper each time picking out all the last remnants um, just so that I could clean it out of my body because that that when you've got any kind of stain in you or any kind of block, it stops, you, it stops the full expression of love. You can never fully love properly because you don't trust anybody. You're not even conscious that you don't. You just don't trust anybody because somebody that you idolized and that you trusted betrayed that trust. So that film was a massive revelation and obviously it led on to We'll talk about another the feature, time yeah. about the feature film. But it was but a real gift. I mean, I would say, you know, from, from a director's point of view, and I'm sure the directors who did the other films, it is like a gift when a director gets a script yeah. that has got that much truth in it. And, and probably same as an actor when they read it. When we read Romans 12, 20, I, I was thinking, wow, this is a real gem. Yeah. It's well, a gift. You really did a, an amazing job on it. It's still, I still never forget either. There's a scene in it with the priest I remember you and Ludwig were talking to, we, we had, is it, is it going to give the film away? Ever talk about yeah, this? Yeah, we can does talk it, about it, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's a scene in it where the, where the priest sets himself on fire and we needed a church to do that and so we went to lots of churches and I remember you telling me that you were talking to one priest and he said, what's the nature of the film? And you said, oh, it's about forgiveness and this guy's been abused and he forgives this paedophile and you said the priest closed his eyes and continued the rest of the conversation yeah. with his eyes closed. Never opened them again no. until the end of the conversation. And I thought, wow. Because my, my friend, who was a pastor, one of my students, Pastor Tony, he said he screened it in front of all of his priest yes. friends. And he said, you could have heard a pin drop because everybody was like, well, yeah, forgiveness, but, you know, not at that level. Yes. But forgiveness is about, is about recognising that um, that it's a stain or a parasite in you and you're going to give it over to God. You're going to give it over to reciprocity. You're going to give it over to causation. That was what the film was, it, it, very metaphorical, the burning bit. Yeah. I never, I mean, obviously this is open to interpretation, but in my mind it was never a actual, like 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 a, a physical act that happened in real life. It was much more metaphorical. Yeah. It's more of a representation. It's symbolic. Yeah, it's it, very true. The, now the, we're talking yeah. about it. It's about the burning of the sin. It was about, yes. the, in, in, the, in the Old Testament, they call it the burnt sacrifice. The burnt sacrifice is always a sin sacrifice. So it's the, the priest represented the fact that I'd given him back the parasite that mm -hmm. he'd given to me. He'd got something of mine, Paul. He'd stolen my autonomy. He'd stolen my faith, and I re when I gave him back his parasite, he gave me back my um, autonomy. Yeah. And then he represented, and this I'm only realising this now as we talk, because I'm writing about this kind of stuff at the moment, but he represented the burnt sacrifice. So the sin is sacrificed, the sin is burnt and consumed when you give it back to the, to the person yeah. that gave it to you. Well, some people didn't know that and and they can't i mean i can understand why it got their back up you know yeah. wow you burnt a, a, a prison for me it was always metaphorical yeah and the only person that actually saw it the first time we screened it was the priest yeah and he came up to us and he said that was really you know i understand the metaphor yeah he got He's, it but he said i think you skipped over the fact that you were going to burn him to that extent in the church 
Otherwise, you wouldn't, we wouldn't have got insurance <laughs> <laughs> because when, when it went up, you, you could see the flames at the raft. I mean, it, it, it wasn't going to burn the church down, but no, he, yeah. he just said, I think, and, and I genuinely said, did we not tell you we were going to burn him? And he thought, no, I thought it was just metaphorical. I metaphorical, we were, yeah. I thought we were, I didn't know you were going to actually do it in the church. Yeah, it's so, interesting as well. I remember watching it. I remember because we were all there when, when we set fire. Obviously, the, the actor was in a, in a burning suit dressed as a priest and mm-hmm. When they when he when he put the light to himself, you know he was expecting it to just be a gradual fire. Then then an inferno. He just went. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting of, it. Yeah, kind of exploded, yeah. and it was. You can um, see the camera shake. Um, and it, it was, that is metaphorical. It is saying, you know, that when you give that sin over mm-hmm. to God, it will be consumed. It's automatically consumed, and that's the key. It's having the courage to do that, um, and that's what for me filmmaking is about. It's having the courage to to sit down. And write the things that you don't want to see on paper, that you're afraid yes. to see on paper, because they're they're the things that hold the energy, that contain the energy. You have to you have to let go of them in order to release the energy. When we did Romans, the feature, we'll talk about yes. that another time. But you know, going to Edinburgh, I was trembling like a leaf before I sat in front of an audience, because you've got to try and um, you've got to try and qualify what you're writing, and and because a lot of it was intuited i didn't know a lot of what i was writing i didn't understand a lot of it until it until afterwards but i had the same voice that said um i've got the holy dove in me so when you turn up to talk we'll talk for you don't worry just turn up you need to turn up you need to stand in front of the audience but we'll talk for you so you just let you let that energy talk through you and that energy answers the questions honestly so obviously people some people were upset about you know certain scenes in it and that and and you just say to them we just we just want to tell the truth why do you want to tell the truth because it sets people free but that definitely happened in terms of people getting uh, affected by in, and cleansing yeah going back to that because do you remember what happened in romans twelve twenty in the first screening yeah yeah what was that quite um there was oh, a guy yeah was, a woman we watched the, well, the one i remember was watching the film and when we stood i was at the very back and i, and I stood up and this huge monster big I'm going to say monster, but he's a big, massive guy. He stood up and he just looked at me and I knew. And he made his way through the clouds and he just hugged me and cried. <clears throat> and he said, that's me. See, if we can reach people like that. Yeah, but you know what he said? I don't know if I've told you this. He said, he kept in touch with me and it was, turned out he was a model. Um, and he was mm-hmm. very handsome, very muscular. And he said, uh, after watching the film, I went and confronted the person that abused me. He said he got arrested and he said, and I've just found out he's committed suicide. Oh, crikey. Wow. So just, but he just, he enabled him to put it to bed. He didn't, obviously didn't want the guy to do that, but he just wanted, he wanted to stand in front of this guy and say, this is, this is what you did. So it had, a, it had an effect on a lot of people that give a lot of people permission to, to tell their story and to, to kind of, uh, you know, bring this stuff that's hidden, mm-hmm. you know, out into the light and begin that begin that process of uh, healing it you know well we had one woman who put her hand up and said this is not a question because we were doing a Q&A she said this is not a question I would just like to say thank you for saving my husband's life oh. I don't know if you remember was that, that at Warwick um, no I can't remember where no because it because it, it happened a few yeah it, it happened, happened at Warwick times. as well yeah, yeah, yeah guys there it was really emotional it yeah. just gives pe- people permission to talk about it especially when we did Romans because it was so visceral it was talking about the aftermath of abuse self-abuse sexual self-abuse shame you know and all that kind of stuff so it was um it's kind of it's talking about areas that people haven't talked about and areas because because people have this uh, parasite in them and it's continuing to abuse them so someone that abused you 30 years ago is still abusing you now because he's still in you he's still in your memory he's still in your thoughts he's still taking over your autonomy he's still getting you to act in a way that is not in accordance with love or kindness or wisdom. Um, and it says to them, I'm going to talk about this self-abuse, sexual self-abuse, because it's talk, because it's torturing me, the shame of it, and, and it's blackmailing me. So I'm going to talk about it because it's a byproduct of the abuse itself. And then if I, if I can talk about it, then you can talk about it. And, and it just gives people permission to talk without feeling, because the shame goes, don't talk about that, because people will think, you're just, you know, heinous, that you're uh, dirty. 
Which they did um, talk to us a lot after the screening. Yeah, I think. it had a massive effect on people. Um, so you, you, you send the film out as an intercessor. Yeah.